A Life of Courage and Service is the title of the biography of former ANC leader Ruth Mompati. It's written by veteran poet and writer Wally Sorote. The book details the personal and political life of Mompati during apartheid and her contribution to the reconstruction of the country post-1994 in various roles in government. Ruth Mompati was introduced to the ANC as a typist for Nelson Mandela and Oliver Tambo, but author Wally Serote joins us in studio to tell us more about his latest book. It's great to have you with us here, Wally. Thank Thanks, you for Michelle. coming in. Thank you very much. So, prolific poet, prolific author as well uh, that you are. Tell us about the journey to you writing this book. Um, um, the current uh, uh, premier mm. of Northwest, Maape, approached me to say... Um, uh, Mayor Ruth is of age now, and she thought he thought that uh, we should. He's approaching me as as a writer to write the biography. Initially, I thought like, I'd never written a, a biography. Right. We discussed it, and then I said, "Let me let me think through it." I thought about it, and I thought the bo most important thing is not Mape who must tell me that is Mayor Ruth. So, what she, year was this, Wally? Uh, I would say it's about four years ago, mm. or maybe four, four and a half, something like that. Uh, then I went to Meruth, maybe more than that now. Yeah, more than that, I More think. than that now. Uh, I went to Meruth and I said, Meruth, uh, my pay has approached me about the, to write your biography. I want to know, I want to say, if I do, I have to be very frank, honest about it and she said write it and that's how the journey started now every friday from then on i had to drive from here from Joburg to freiburg and come back on sunday uh, i spent a lot of time with her yeah uh, interviewing her uh, i was fortunate in the sense that it was not the first time that i met i had met her several times yeah. when we were still in exile uh, the first time I met her, um, he was in Lusaka, the second was in London, and after that, subsequent to that, many times. Yeah. In London, when, she, when, when I met her, the, the then uh, ANC chief rep said to me, uh, Ruth Mumpati is coming, you have to write her speech. I'd never written a speech before. I don't know why that happens all the time. <laughs> I'd never written a speech for a, a leader before, but I sat and did what I could. Mm -hmm. Mayor Ruth arrived, I gave her the speech, she read it, and we, she, she told me that I must accompany her to Bournemouth, where the, all of the trade unions in Britain were meeting and she was going to address them. We got there, and as I was sitting there next to her, she was talking, she didn't have the speech, she gave a whole speech and finished. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you were always meant to write her biography, given your interaction even in exile. Even in exile, yes, yes. I was, inside me, I was very close to her. She, I felt she, she was a very special person, yeah. respectable. And, uh, of course, I approached her as my leader, as my elder, and all of us, I'm sure, now and then we remembered our mothers, and when we saw, saw the elders, we made them our mothers. Yeah. And she was something like that to me, in Yeah. Mm. Very strict. Yeah, it's interesting that you talk about the uh, mother aspect, the mothering aspect, because that's a, it's quite a big it's, it's a big issue theme in the book. In yes. the book, right? Yes, um, yes. And I've actually just bookmarked this one very painful part of her story, which yes, is, of course, yes, the, the time yes. that she spent in exile. Yes, about And the time children. that she spent away from her children. Mm. Ten years. Ten years. Was yes. that a very painful thing for her, even to talk to you about? Absolutely painful. Uh, I mean, many, many times she talked to me about it, but I also was witness when she was talking about it in different platforms. Mm. For instance, when she was uh, bestowed with the highest honor of the ANC, she is Tolandwe. One of the things that she said, they asked her, uh, if you were to come back, if you passed and came back, what would you do? And she said, I would want to be with my children and bring them up. 
Sure. And then she talked about the political things, you know. Uh, there's a letter in the book where she, she, she wrote to one of the MK cadres, a young woman, where she said, this is the most painful thing I've ever experienced. And then, of course, now and then she went to Botswana underground to work there, and she, had, she always hoped she would find a way to bring them through. It didn't work, but eventually it worked. Now, here's another thing. They, they are there with her in Lusaka, but she, they never see each other. Wow. They go to the camps. She's all over the world, mobilizing women, mobilizing uh, nations to support the struggle. Uh, they come back here. One day she gets a phone call. Your eldest son passed on quietly in sleep. Uh, it's a tragedy, uh, a whole tragedy. Uh, and I think with Meruth, uh, it, really, it really made a, an unhealing wound in yeah. her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is no healing there. Right? You can't there, heal. There, there isn't. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I actually want to read um, this excerpt from the book. It's on page 162 for our viewers who, who are tracking our discussion and who have, who have bought the book. She says, I used to get ill thinking about my children. Yes. After 10 years of separation, I wrote them a letter and I gave it to somebody to hand deliver it to, to join, them. Yes. Yeah. In it, she said to them, if you want to join me, I'm in Botswana, just across the border, come over. So the children packed and came to join me. And, and that's part of what, what you're describing now, right? They come to join her, but they don't meet up. But also in that, in that, in that thing, uh, she raises a very, very important thing. They did not know each other when they met. No, it was impossible. Uh, they know about a mother, but here's somebody they don't know, you know, they're meeting for the first time. And both of, the three of them don't know what to do to each hmm. other. Children know that they hugged their mother, but they were hesitant until he, she took uh, uh, initiative and hugged them and so on. And she talks about it, how painful it was, especially in her mind, they were still little. Now yeah. they are walking right. and they are talking. Right. She has to re-recognize re them, you know, 10 years. Mm. For a mother to be strangers to her, to, to her children, right? That, that's a painful thing because the, the youngest would have been two and a half when she left. Yes. The oldest would have been six. six. And so 16. 16. And 12 when and she 12. came back. They've These gone through a whole men, you know. <laughs> developmental stage, stage of yeah. life and, yeah. and, and then to be reintroduced. It's such an important story, Wally, um, one of many, many important stories. And did you feel the weight of, of telling that important story of sacrifice and what it took for the people who sacrificed and gave up so much in our struggle for liberation? Uh, sitting with Mary Ruth, you could not miss that. And it is not because she spoke about it. I mean, I posed a lot of questions. And when she responds uh, honestly about them, you feel the weight. You know, you feel the weight. Uh, one of the things is no family. Your family is the African National Congress. Right, right. Thing, the other thing, as I was saying earlier on, you meet your children, there is no rapport between you because they don't know you. And you yourself, you are amazed at these tall things which you left as little babies. And here they are, they are speaking. Wow. They are talking to you, you know. But you don't know what to do as a mother. Mm. Mm -hmm. At the same time, many times I'm sure you had um, uh, pictures of what you do. But those pictures don't work when, you're, when they are here. Because this is real now. Mm. You know, it's not... So it's a... Uh, it's, um, and then the other thing that she... You know, when she talks about her mother, uh, it's a very painful thing because she was very close to the mother, who she says, my mother was a white woman, hmm? my mother was a white woman with long black hair, but a hardcore Motswana hmm. who gave us everything about being Botswana. And when she said that, you descend into... The, the, her longing, you know. I mean, Ruth, by the age of um, 20, she was already away from the mother. Mm. Mm? And then she was teaching, and then she was waiting to go to school. And the family was broken already, you know, before 
as a young woman in her early 20s. The father was in the mines. Mm. The mother was trying to, to rear a cattle to ensure that all the other six, seven children are educated and so on. So you don't have, you don't have this sense of this collective a family mm. being together. It's, it's shattered, mm. you know, into pieces. And she had that, she had a deep sense of that. But now it is repeating her itself, you know. No children, no husband, and she shatters the world, yeah. you know. And at the same time, not regretting that. She's not regretting that here I am, uh, getting old, a mother, not knowing your children fully. She's saying the most important thing is South Africa must be free. That South Africa that we're working for to be non-racial, non-sexist, democratic, must be free. It demands sacrifice from us. Wow. And they committed to that, you see. Mm. Uh, again, the issue of mothering is, is, a, is a big one in your book. And, and I wonder how much of what you've just described, Wally, um, you know, her own history, her own journey as a mother, how much of that influenced who she was to other young activists who yes. called her. Mama Ruta. You know, um, uh, when I was talking to her and talking to the young to the young women about, I'm sure I talked to about maybe eight, nine of them, who when they came, they were in their early twenties. When you listened to how she she nurtured them, mm. how she ensured that they absolutely first and most important understood themselves so that they can understand what is it that they are here for. But there were also many, many other challenges. They come into a camp, there are 500 men, there's 20 of yeah, them, yeah. you know. They have to find a way, you know, to understand why are they there and how they are, are they going to be sure. They complete training after three, four years. She goes to them and says, you must go and study. Mm. Michelle, all of them, absolutely studied medical doctors business people one of them was uh, in the air force you know a uh, granny uh, all of them very solid people because of the fact that they sat with her and faced this challenge they are in the minority there are these 500 men you know who maybe they themselves have not seen a woman in years because they were in training yeah and they had not uh, come to fight as yet. So it's, it's a, these challenges that they are facing. Mm. Human nature mm. being put to the absolute test. Who are you? Why are you here? What are you going to do? Even then she had the foresight to yes. say to them, it's not just about the now. It's the You future. need to invest in your future. In and your education future. is the key. Absolutely. And the, the, the most important thing is that they listened to her. Yeah. They trained, they finished their course, they were deployed. When they were not deployed, they went and became doctors and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. And when they came back here also into the country, they still practiced what the SANC does, but also as business people and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. One of the first uh, women members of Mkonto Wesizwe was Ruth Mpati. And um, I, I wonder, Wally, you know, the, the conversations that you had with her, Given her own investment and sacrifice in our struggle for liberation, um, before her passing in 2015, what were her sentiments about where the ANC was even then? Um, did, did she weigh in on that with you? Yes, yes. You know, uh, what we must understand is that uh, ANC members who were in exile had a vision of what kind of country is, uh, 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 must be created. And we created it. We created a, a semblance of that country mm. at one point. But by the time Mayor Ruth dies, that's when you realize that there's something which has gone very wrong in the ANC. The ANC is now very distant from the people. The ANC is uh, earmarked by corruption. The ANC is not itself as, as, as the people knew it. They are distant from it. Being a leader like that, 
who we, you and I have just described. Mm. You can see the dilemma, the pain, the bewilderment mm. of what should we have done so that we are not where we are. You know, it's a question that many of you know. In the past uh, four or five years here in South Africa, you saw that generation passing one after the other. Mm. And you could see that partly they are passing because they are in deep pain. Mm. You know, they went into this thing as boys of 20, girls of 22, like Meruth. I mean, when she went to the, to, to, she was about 20 something, mm -hmm. you know. She comes back, she passes at 86. Hmm? Uh, an old woman, you know, which means her whole being was in this thing. Mm. And, 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 and it was seen, the sun rising and saying, here's that thing that you fought for. And then the sun sets while we are looking. Mm. She passed like that. Um, I remember the last time I saw her, I went to, I went, I woke up in the morning and I thought, you know, I have not been to Meru in two weeks. It was a Sunday. Got into the car, drove straight there. And when I got to the house, the, 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 the lady who works for her there says no. She says she doesn't want to see anybody. So I said no, uh, I'll go into the village to talk to the people, but please mention that I was mm. here and I'd like to. I came back. There she was. She was waiting for me. And she said to me, uh, I am very ill. The doctors have said to me, uh, I must go for thorough checkup. So tomorrow I'm leaving for Cape Town. It was Sunday. By Wednesday or Thursday, she had passed. Wow. Mm. I imagine a great disappointment, heartbreak, disillusionment um, for leaders like Ruth Mobati, who sacrificed so much to see where the country had ended up. Wally Sorote. A great achievement, um, Mayor Ruth Montpartier, A Life of Courage and Service. If you haven't already done so, go out and get this book. Incredibly important for us to remember where we came from mm -hmm. and to pay tribute to important leaders like Ruth Montpartier. Thank you very much, Michelle. Thank you.